G'day and welcome back to Painting Oatsworn. In today's episode, we are focusing on painting feathers, which has nothing to do with the Huntress and everything to do with her falcons. If you're interested in seeing how I painted the Huntress, I've linked in the description below the full paint through of her, which was done live on stream. So for the falcons, we've gone with a slightly different approach than the overlay color, as what we're trying to do is build up layers of texture. So these figures have no overlay color, but as you'll see during the paint through, there is a specific reason for that. And rather than me explaining it here, why don't we move over to the video? Let's get started. So what I think is something that a lot of painters don't really utilize enough is a variety of different tools. And you can see in this particular video, I'm starting off with a brush that is almost as big as the model itself. This is an approach that I've used on multiple occasions on multiple different figures. And what it's doing, as you can see, the bristles on this brush are slightly separating. And this is depositing the paint in a very textured and natural way. Now this is a, something that you can replicate for a variety of different textures. I like to use this for cloth. I like to use it for uh, feathers as you've seen here. And textures like leather can also be interesting. So this is another approach, another tool in, in the toolkit that you've got to add texture and visual interest. Now these sculpts with the feathers they are flat feathers. There is very, very limited texture on the actual sculpt himself. And that's because these are a PVC figure as opposed to the more impressive hips plastic, which is able to hold detail slightly better. So this brush approach is just really, really straightforward and also really quick rather than going in and painting every single feather with an individual line the brush is doing all of the hard work for you and that's why i think many painters don't exhaust the full repertoire of tools that we have available to us this brush isn't expensive i bought this from my local stationery store it was about three dollars it doesn't even have to be a really high quality brush as you can see what i'm actually looking for is that slight bit of separation from the bristles. If you want to speed it up, you don't have to use each individual feather. You can just do what I've done on the underside here, which is fling it across the whole surface. This doesn't look quite as effective as the feathers look like one feather, but it can still work. So with our next step, what we're trying to achieve is not lose all of the detail that we've just placed down with those bristles. And so rather than using a fully opaque paint, we're going to use transparent colors. And of course, I'll be using the contrast paints here because they do allow that texture that we've already placed on the model to come through. As you can see, I'm using a technique I talked about in the wood episode, which is mixing in a couple of different colors and blending them together. This is going to create our base tone in the same way that in previous episodes we've used an overlay color. Here, this is just our quick and easy way to get these figures ready for the next steps. Particularly like the contrast paints for this type of approach with the already built up texture, the already built up value contrast from white and black as it helps the contrast paints look more vibrant and intense over the white, but still have those dark areas of shadow. One of the tricks I've talked about in previous episodes, um, as you've seen, I use contrast paints a fair bit. I highly recommend grabbing yourself a hairdryer. If you are doing individual figures or uh, just a couple at a time, having a hairdryer really can speed up this process of contrast paints or glazing like this with a really dilute color. It can inc 
increase the drying time dramatically. Um, I've done this on my streams. You can see how quickly I'm able to move from this still wet and uh, thick contrast paint to a finished and ready to progress to the next stage layer. So I've moved over to the airbrush here and this is not a step that I think I would do again. So what I was trying to achieve out of this layer was a very simple harmonizing layer. And I think it worked, but I don't think it's a necessary step. The next step, we're going to mix up a layer to add some more feather detail. So if you go and look at pictures of birds, feathers themselves are fascinating colors and the way that those colors are dispersed across the feathers. So what I'm trying to do here is, is concentrate these highlights on specific areas. And these highlights are going to do a lot of the heavy lifting. All of that work that we've done previously is about creating a sensation of feathers without necessarily looking perfect. But these strokes that we're applying now are very carefully angled to really help reinforce that feather texture with those little strokes. So as I've talked about in, in each of the previous episodes on texturing and detail, the direction of the brush stroke is a crucial component of getting a realistic looking effect, whether that's leather, whether that's metal, whether that's any other element like feathers, having the direction of the brush stroke be in your front of mind as you're working will help to improve the final result. Now this bird I'm aiming for a pretty generic looking bird so I did actually do a little bit of research on feathers in advance to painting this figure and so these colors are pretty straightforward they're the brown and the white that you tend to see on most falcons and eagles. The only real key part on this step that you need to be considering is really that angle of those brush strokes and adding to the overall appearance of this looking more like a natural animal as opposed to something that is man-made. So I think it's neat to add these little white elements across the various feather components. One of the areas I do think it makes a big difference is that second layer of feathers. If you add the this highlight color onto this second layer of feathers above, that's when it really starts to look like a natural and, and effective look. So this color is a mixture of purulent yellow and deep brown. I wanted it to be uh, quite a natural looking tone, but I felt we needed a little bit more contrast and so I've mixed up a, a warmer, whiter version of this color. So here we're really just pumping up the highlights on these feather areas. This color is super bright, still warm, and it's going to uh, look really great when we add some unifying glaze colors over the top. These little falcons are actually really neat sculpts. You know, the feathers are clearly defined, even if there isn't any feather texture on them. I do think in some ways that's actually a beneficial thing because it means you get to add your own texture and your own feather variations, which can actually look better from a distance because you are able to use bigger strokes. The only downside of course is that one of the easiest things you can do is throw a layer of a contrast paint over some already sculpted detail and uh, watch it do all the hard work for you. Bringing it back to the Zenith or Prime, here you can see we're concentrating these lights on the raised areas. We're looking at the upper part for the really lightest colors 
and looking at the lower areas having less of a highlight. One thing I haven't talked about enough in these videos is the impact of a varnish. You can see on this figure now that there's a lot of satin finish from the contrast paint. Now that satin finish is something that will often trick your eyes and make it look like it is more vibrant or more highlighted than it actually is. And so when you apply a varnish, whether that's through an airbrush or through a brush on or through a spray can, which is what I use, what you'll have the effect of is a layer of harmonizing, unifying all of those colors to have the same level of reflection. And this is actually a really important step in my process because I use so many different types of finishes from satin to ultra matte and then even in some instances a really glossy color which is the the inks and the contrast paints can have a very glossy finish so being considerate and mindful of that something i recommend doing is is hitting your figures with a layer of matte varnish maybe at about three quarters of the way through your process as it will really give you a much better sense of how much highlighting or shading you might need to do. So back to the feathers, you can see what I was talking about, this little second layer of feathers, it really does have an impact on the overall finish, is having that extra layer of light along there, makes it look more natural, more alive. Something else I like to do is just add some little dots across those various areas as well. I'm about to mix up some contrast paint through the airbrush and this is just again to really harmonize all these colors, re-add some warmth. This is the snake bite leather, it's a really warm color. I think it's uh, fantastic for natural looking elements like leather or um, in this case the feathers. And I'm applying it quite liberally, I'm also on occasion mixing in some darker colors to re-add some shadows and this is the the real power of the airbrush you know you can do these very quick filters over these layers that are a transparent color that will still allow that detail that you've already implemented to come through but does change the tone so here I'm just going to quickly demonstrate a, a process I've talked about it's called black lining all I'm doing with this process is actually re-adding some separation between these elements. So the way that I've painted these feathers, it's pretty easy to lose the fact that they're individual volumes, individual elements. And so just running a diluted black or dark brown in between each of these feathers, and you don't have to be hitting every one, just catching uh, most of them will actually help break up the overall feather elements and make it look a little bit more realistic. We're then just moving into, as per normal, our final highlight, which is post airbrush. This is the really final details, the little feathers. Again, this is quite clearly focused on specific areas to draw focus. This color does start out looking quite light uh, there is a little bit of the purulent yellow in there which does make it look a little bit uh, warmer as it dries. But this step is my favorite part of painting. It's the little pop highlights, the little step that makes everything, all of that underlying work come to life. And you can see now that they have the appearance of feathers without really uh, all that much effort put into those individual brush strokes. This is the only stage where I've really tried to add these little individual lines. Consistency of paint is crucial here. If you get it too dilute, your paint will run into the cracks and it will ruin the effect. If you are too thick, you won't get clean lines. So finding that right consistency of paint so that it flows from your brush neatly, but isn't too dilute, that's a practice and 
of a a feel. And I think that's the hardest thing for me to try and convey through these videos is the amount of practice that I've had at mixing colors, at utilizing my airbrush, at finding the right balance of temperatures and contrasts. That's all something that I do almost second nature. So don't be disheartened if your speed or your process is not coming out exactly the same way as mine. These videos are aimed at getting a quick, effective result, but I'm also trying to challenge what people consider as a board game's quick finish job, because I think, as you've seen in these videos, with a little bit of practice and a little bit of time, you can get some really fantastic looking results. Most of these figures are at about two hours of paint, and in a couple of cases, I think the maximum was about two hours and 40 minutes. I think I spent about an hour, maybe an hour 20 on both of the Falcons. And I changed the colors on the second one. So we had a darker Falcon with some black feathers, just so we could separate the two on the battlefield. And that brings to a close this episode on painting feathers. As you can see, there's a heap of different ways that you can approach texture on things like feathers. And I find the easiest way is to actually incorporate different brushes to allow them to do all the work for you. In the next video, we are going to be painting the blade and the topic will be painting gold. And we'll also talk about painting faces and hair as well. I am looking forward to it and I hope you are as well. See you in the next episode. Big Daniel, out.